talk. And our next speaker of the session is uh, Stefan Mihalash from the Allen Institute for Brain Science. And he's going to tell us about principles of cortical circuit organization. Looks good. Right, so right. Um, thank you very much um, for participating in here. And I want to say that uh, I'm going to present work which has been done by a huge number of people. I'm going to try to mention multiple people along the way, but at the same time, we are part of a large organization which is focused on team science. And we have a lot of data, which I'm happy to be able to just uh, synthesize very, very briefly. Um, I would want to say that as a theoretician in um, computational neuroscience, we are I'm very much interested in a model of cortical processing. And I view that as the capacity of linking data relating structure, activity, and computation. And I would want to make a distinction between activity and a computation or a task in order to be able to build models which reflect this. However, it is in um, the brain is incredibly complex, especially the mammalian brain. It's difficult to imagine how much information can be present, even if we were to just simplify it at the level of numbers of neurons and synapses. There are about 10 to the 12 synapses in a mouse brain, maybe on the order of 12 to the 15 synapses in a human brain. Just as a comparison, if we were to just assume a few bits per synapse, a human brain, which is many orders of magnitude larger than mouse brain, it's going to be on the order of information compared to a library of Congress in terms of, term of the amount of information. Such that um, we already know that there need to be simplifying principles which are going to be able to link that type of information because the um, brain structure does not appear to be encoded with 10 to the 15 uh, elements of information decoded. It's coming from a DNA, which is much, much lower in, ter in term of uh, amount of information which is present. So one of the thing, one of the approaches which I think would be very important to try to consider is to first extract what are most important principles, or we can call them knowledge, first at the level of structure, activity, and computation before they are necessarily integrated into, into a model. Simply trying to imagine that we are going to measure all of these parameters, put them into a data-driven model, turn the light on, and computations would just appear out of that, out of that complexity, I think is naive. Um, on that, I will try to think about how we did uh, some small steps on trying to extract some of these organizational principles and to begin at the level of structure. Um, Cerebral cortex can vary hugely in size across mammals. And it's very interesting that evolutionarily, you can sometimes see large brains in branches very close to near to nearly uh, relatively small brains. And in such a way, there is an expectation that there are going to be relatively simple principles which would allow scaling of uh, part of the structure to allow uh, dynamically uh, building these types of modules which are needed. Some of those are described at the level of um, cortical columns sometimes or areas. And the global organization in the past has been described as hierarchical in a uh, fantastic paper from Fellman and Van Essen, in which uh, they characterize the patterns of terminations of um, connections and say that feed forward patterns have the tendency to terminate into needle layers of the cortex. Uh, lateral patterns have the tendency to be columnar, while descending or feedback pathway have the tendency to terminate into deep or superficial layers. But that assumes that we know what are ascending lateral or descending patterns. Now, if we assume that these patterns are of this sort, then it is possible to build a hierarchy uh, of the macaque um, Cortical, cortical areas. At the same time, when hearing this, it sounds a little bit of a chicken and egg problem, that if you define the patterns of the connection, you get the hierarchy. If you take the hierarchy, you define the patterns of connections. Question, can we do better? 
better about it? Can we try to define more mathematically a hierarchy and to try to understand this more in a data-driven process to be able to extract this principle? In order to do that, um, uh, we have analyzed the Allen Mouse Brain Connectivity Atlas, which is a fantastic resource. Uh, I, there were many people to contribute to this, uh, just some of the major contributors are Julie Harris, Jennifer Whitesell, Carla Hirokawa, and uh, under the leadership of Hong Kui Zhang, who over many years have built uh, an anterograde track tracing uh, method based on two photon tomography. All the data is integrated, all the data is available on our website. Please come see it. Um, we did analyze these in the past, looking at strengths of connections. However, hierarchy did not appear during the analysis regarding strengths. What was very interesting from our perspective was that we needed to move away from a theory which is based in a type of strengths of connections to one which is centered on types of connections. We need to move away from graph theory and to begin to think about principles of multigraph theory. What does it mean? It means that instead of uh, simply having one type of connection which you measure in weight, uh, you do have multiple types of connections which, uh, which, link, which can link different cell types or different positions uh, for these columns in the hierarchy. And we characterize these types of connections in the brain. And uh, I was um, very happy to be joined in this endeavor of uh, analyzing the graph theory by a fantastic mathematician, Han Choi, who is uh, starting a faculty position at Georgia Tech next year. And I presume that we'll uh, look for young scientists to join her lab. Um, again, the main part for that, what we did uh, initially was to um, characterize the types of connections which are present. And for that, we did an unsupervised clustering of the layer patterns. Um, and we did that for both corticocortical and thalamocortical connections. We did uh, end up characterizing nine connectivity patterns generally. And one of the most important next steps was trying to build a mathematical definition of a hierarchy. Let's try to go a little bit through that. We want to map a, a connection to a value which is either of plus one or minus one. Let's start with the simplest principle. You can either go up or go down in, uh, you can either go up or go down in the hierarchy. And then we begin to look at and mapping the types of connections with the value, which is going to be, does it go up or does it go down? We end up defining a set of patterns at the end, but the way we did it was to try to assign a global hierarchy score. You can think of a global uh, hierarchy score as how self-consistent these patterns are. Are you going to go up, 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 and then down, 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 back? Or are you going to see patterns in which you go up, 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 and you end up in the same position? So in the end, you can think of a global hierarchy score as counting the, uh, or quantifying how many inconsistencies are present in a purely hierarchical organization. More precise mathematically, we define an average over the number of um, areas for these values and try to compute the hierarchy for every single area and then to try to see the uh, self-consistency of the difference between the hierarchy for the areas and uh, the hierarchy um, uh, for the connections which are present. We did these analyses, uh, uh, data-driven analyses on the very large scale data set we have, and we have uh, observed that we have statistically a very significant, while it is very shallow, it is nowhere near as what was the expectations based on the drawing from Fellman and Van Essen. The hierarchy is relatively shallow, but it is statistically highly significant. Uh, but hierarchy is not the only organizational principle which we found. There is a modularity analysis, there is an intermodule hierarchy, there is an intramodule hierarchy, and we can put all of these uh, principles together. So that was an extraction of principles at the level of the anatomy. Now, very briefly, I'm going to compare it with what we see at the level of activity and computation. In order to, uh, to correlate it with anatomical principles, we use a large scale data set based on uh, neuropixels recordings. 
and we looked at uh, trying to define a uh, functional hierarchy. For example, in this case, it is defined as a function of the median functional delays as to what happens when you present a flashed image. And what we see is that uh, even that the hierarchy is very shallow, it is it correlates incredibly well with what we see in with what we see in terms of function. That was only one measure. There are many other measures which one uh, which one can consider, which is a time to per spike, receptive field areas, modulation index, and multiple other multiple other measures, which all relate very well to this measure. Again. Remember, this measure comes not from characterizing connection strengths in the brain, only by the characterization of the connection types which are present between areas. And lastly, I'm going to try to briefly mention how we can think about linking this to computation. We did a relatively interesting side project almost as a result of that when trying to think what would happen if we were to take a hierarchical network, a deep neuronal network, but add two types of plasticity. One, we are going to keep the standard backpropagation on a supervised level of plasticity um, and uh, add an additional uh, layer on unsupervised, uh, unsupervised uh, plasticity within, an, uh, within the lateral connections, which is almost Hebbian. What we have observed is that the networks end up not being quite as good as the original networks, like on CNN on the original images. However, they end up being way more robust to noise. Currently, we have a uh, project which I'm collaborating with Michael Weiss on trying to understand much more generally what are the constraints of anatomy on what are the levels of tasks and looking for scientists to join us in this endeavor. In summary, uh, I would want to think that it is very important to first introduce principles at the level of structure activity and computation rather than data, that uh, we want to think in terms of data-driven but with an intermediary step of including principles, and to add the fact that one of the principles which we've seen come up all the time is the ideas of cell types and connection types. And for us, when we were to link to some of the in vivo activity and to tasks, not the strengths, but rather the types of connections ended up being uh, more relevant. In the end, I would like to uh, thank the founder, Paul G. Allen, for his vision, encouragement, and support. And again, this is the result of a large team. Thank you. Thank you. Really fantastic talk. We, uh, we have time for one quick question. And if you enjoyed the talk, please drop some praise in the chat. So uh, Marine Sarvestani is asking, uh, can you speculate why the avoidance of feedback projections to middle layers seen in primates is preserved in mice, whereas the distinct laminar distribution of feed forward projections is not? It's a a very good question, and uh, one can speculate uh, quite a bit. I would say that it is a little bit more present than uh, than that. The similarities are a little bit stronger than uh, what are what is necessarily observed in the data, and one would need to quantify better the data in monkeys because we don't really know that very well. Um, Hannah at the moment is looking at particular models which are going to try to think from the perspective of hierarchical predictive coding uh, if these types of laminar distributions are going to, import, to be important to be important for that and we generally go along principles of conservation across this but I do not know exactly why the feed forward can be broader. It might have to do with longer, uh, with longer time scales for integration needed for a monkey but that's pure speculation. Great, thanks. Um, and